Hi, I chose the book Lewis Agonistes by Louis Marcos. It's about C.S. Lewis and how Agonistes means to wrestle and how he wrestled between secular and spiritual beliefs. I chose this book because I really like C.S. Lewis. I really enjoyed reading the Chronicles of Narnia when I was younger. And so I wanted to learn more about his life and his wrestlings. When he was young, he had a brother named Warney and they used to create imaginary worlds. And so a lot of these worlds ended up in his children's books. He had a dad who was very emotional and a mother who was very logical. She was a mathematician. His mom died of cancer when he was young and um, his dad sent him away to boarding school. While he was at boarding school, there was a wardrobe much like the one in The Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe. He went back to visit his dad and his dad connected him with a man named Kirkpatrick who ended up being an atheist and a skeptic. So Lewis adopted the ideas and beliefs and became a skeptic and an atheist, but he never forgot the moments of joy that he had experienced, which is like when the heavens open and you connect and have those spiritual experiences. He never forgot those and always looked for them, even though he no longer believed, he was a believer. When he went to college, he met a man named Owen Barfield, who was also an atheist, but started to study Norse mythology. And the two of them would spar back and forth um, intellectually. And then he also met J.R.R. Tolkien, who was a Christian. And through the two of these men, he started to believe more in Christ and study ancient religions, um, mythology of all sorts. Uh, Hinduism, all kinds of teachings, and um, came back to Christ. He had a friend who was his war buddy who they made a deal that if one of them passed away they would take care of the other's family. His friend ended up dying and so he took care of the friend's mother, Mrs. Warren, and he did her bidding and anything she wanted to. He believed he was going to be a bachelor for his whole life because he had just taken care of her. When he was in his late 50s, uh, he had a radio show where he talked about his teachings and his beliefs and his writings. And he uh, interacted with his fans and one of his fans' name was Joy Davidman. She got divorced, she had two boys and they wrote back and forth. She went to visit him, they had really good conversations and then they ended up getting married. She died three years later of cancer, which led to him writing A Grief Observed. The way the book is set up is each chapter is a wrestle with something. So it's set up where it presents the world's views, the philosophies, the ideas, and then it, the next section is about how C.S. Lewis um, changes these views, how he supports them. And he's both logical and spiritual and mystical and myths and loves all of those things. All of his prior learnings, he incorporates into leading people to Christ. The first chapter is wrestling with science, where they talk about how God's been replaced with nature and evolution. The answer that, that Lewis came up with was some things cannot evolve, like joy, his spiritual insights, ethics, human reason, and religion. The next section is wrestling with a new age where people believe that the heavens are cold, empty spaces. And he points out that the heavens are not cold, but warm, dazzling fields throbbing with life. The next part is wrestling with evil and suffering. Um, why do we have bad things happen on this earth? And they talk about, um, page 111 says, Through, Though Christ does not always deliver us from tragedies, he always shares fully in our grief. And talks about how those tragedies are what turns our hearts to God so we can listen to him and become um, more like him and open to his words. They compare this to Aslan the lion in the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, who embodies the teachings of the Jews, the Greeks, spring, Christian, all of it is embodied in Aslan, who is not um, Christ, 
but a type of Christ because Aslan has his own story, his own experiences, his own background. But the idea is for it to bring us to Christ. Um, the next one is wrestling with the arts and how the ancients said that there were words and meanings and that was it, nothing else. And then the author talks about how poetry is the language of the gods and the Bible is full of it. And it combines the physical and the spiritual and it evokes emotion and leads us to higher thinking. The last one is wrestling with heaven and hell. They talk about how we make choices, small choices lead to where we're going to go. Um, hell is a state of mind, but heaven is real. And they talk about how... Um, when you have a love towards God and you have that desire and if you want to get to know him, then you will be blessed to get to know him. And the other kind of love is for yourself and your own things. Um, and that's a narcissistic kind of love. And that's what is hell, is only caring about yourself. It says, um, there's one part that talks about how there will be no friends or family in hell because they'll only care about themselves says heaven and hell are not wish fulfillments as much as they are reality fulfillments. So we in reality choose which, which way we'll go. My takeaways from this book, I really enjoyed this book and suggest that you read it. It was so great. Um, my main takeaway was that I can balance between the spiritual and secular just as this class teaches us to be Christian scholars. One of the quotes that describes C.S. Lewis, what I strive to be like, it says, the mature Lewis tempered his logic with a love for beauty, wonder, and magic. And then he understood both the heart that yearns for God and the mind that seeks to know him. And that's what I want to have is a heart that yearns for God and a mind to seek to know him. Um, my second takeaway was Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, who was his really good friend, they read each other's writings and bounced ideas off of each other. They both um, found, realized that the stories they wanted to read hadn't been written yet. And so I liked this because it reinforced the power of stories and made me wonder what stories I want to read and what I want to hear so that I can write and speak them. And then the final takeaway is a desire to go back and read all of the Narnia books and all of the writings of C.S. Lewis, now that I have an understanding of what he's trying to say, I'd like to read them with fresh eyes. They talk about how Narnia, when a child reads it, they get the story and it's a great story in and of itself. And then as an adult, when you go back and read it, then you can see all of the teachings that are found in it. Um, and I like to read his other stories too. So those are my three takeaways, and I highly encourage you to read this if you ever have time, and hope you have a great week. Thanks. Bye.